Previously on Burp Plays Baldur Gate 3, we save a child from being eaten by a snake. We finally find a doctor, but the doctor tried to kill us. We invested in a new up-and-coming thieves guild. We spoke to Zevlar to tell him the bad news that they have to leave. Now it's time to head out the grove and begin our new adventures. Die if I met heroic and reeking of this place. The road to Baldur's Gate is a long one. Who knows how long it'll take these folks to get there on foot. If they make it, they're slow. Well, half or more will die long before Basilisk Gate. Doesn't seem to trouble you a jot. What good would it do for me to be troubled? We can't save them all. I want to have a word. What do you need now? I think it's better if you stay here in camp for a while. Oh, darling, I'm hurt. I thought we had something special. Please, just stay here. I guess I'll spend my evenings lounging here while you do all the hard work. It sounds awful. The Blade of Frontiers at your calling. I noticed your stone eye. Did you lose it in battle? A most vicious one, in fact. It's made from pure bloodstone, carved from the Galena Mountains just north of the Moon Sea. A reminder that sometimes blood must be shed and sacrifices must be made. Ah, but that story is reserved for lifetime friends and calmer days. tiny groove spider across the ice surface. It resembles a sending stone used to confer with distant contacts. Isn't your eye a sending stone? A sending stone? <laughs> Nothing so special, I assure you. You watch and listen for signs of deceit, but sense nothing unusual. How does the Blade of Frontiers end up chasing the devil in the hells? Karlak's fires raged in Baldur's Gate before she escaped to Avernus, as my source told it, and she was planning to return. One of the archdevils Ariel's own, Chaos Incarnate, a devil with pure fire for a heart. I made my way to Avernus to stop her. She fled from my reach, even climbed aboard the Mind Flayer ship as it screeched through the hells. I followed in close pursuit. I can't bear to imagine the lives Karlak might be taking, the damage she might be doing. It's not exactly easy to journey to the Hells from the Sword Coast. How did you manage? A powerful friend with a keen interest in... privacy. I'm sworn to say no more. Let's move on to another matter. All right. Anything more we should discuss? Tell me, Will. How did you come to be the Blade of Frontiers? My father once said, one does not pursue a champion's life. One merely answers its call. So it was for me. I was hunting near the Cloakwood when I heard it. A child crying out from a lone farmstead. I found him in the fields flanked by goblins. His mother's corpse bled into the soil next to him. I don't remember much of the battle but I remember drying the boy's tears after. Whatever become of the boy, I wonder? I left him with his uncles. Five years on and he's flourishing. If only every child was so lucky. I mourn the ones I could never save, whose cries I never heard. In the boy's tears, I finally saw the suffering wrought by the villains of the wild. The frontiers demanded a blade, and so I heeded. And before that? Baldur's Gate, born and raised. The only son of a single father. He wanted one life for me. I chose another. 
We haven't spoken since I left the city. A classic drama. <laughs> a staunch father and his rebellious son. Better heard from the bard's lips than mine. I'd like you to join me. That's the spirit. The pride of the gate. Was a time I tussled with hill giants without breaking a sweat. Now, a mere werebear could swap me halfway to arm. Strange things are happening to us. What festers in our minds may well impel our bodies. How can I help? I was wondering, that condition of yours, why does it require magic? Think of it as... tribute. The kind a king might pay to a more powerful neighbor to avoid invasion. As long as I pay, there will be peace. But should I ever stop, along comes a war. I can assure you, the battlefield would extend well beyond the borders of my body alone. I think I have a magical artifact you'll be interested in. Your enterprising approach to my problem is most encouraging. But it is a delicate process to keep my condition stable. I do not yet need to consume an item, but keep it close by. It will not be too much longer. when they find out the monster hunter is becoming a monster. I've faced countless perils and conquered them all. This will be no different. I've always had a soft spot for the confident ones. They always disappoint them. Let's have a look. Goblin close. I'd know that stench anywhere. I know you're there. Show yourselves. You spotted us. Good. It's like they say. No fun in skewing a pig what doesn't know he's cooked. Curious. I had almost the exact same thought when I saw you. That's supposed to be a threat. Got a set on you, all right. Almost makes me like you. Almost. I'm gonna enjoy pulling off your skin when we're done.
gentlemen. Onward. Nothing will stand in my way. You sniffing where you ain't ought to be, friend. Might have to take that nose. A strange symbol glows marked on their flesh, and something within you stirs in response. Desert funning around while I'm stuck dealing with yobs. I bypassed your guards. If I meant you any harm, I could have killed you all. Ah, go on. I ain't bothered mucking my blade with you. But mind your manners. It seems our infection comes with an unexpected symptom. The ability to influence others. An interesting development, but one to be treated with caution. For better or for worse. If this power comes from the parasite, it can't be trusted, however useful it might be. We'll never know unless we take the risk. A calculated risk, mine. yourself and I won't cut them off. Oh, well, this is it. The end of part 8. Thanks everybody for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. The next episode is underway. See you guys later.